All right, so today we're finally gonna be able to install the pulley. Um, so this pulley is one I had ordered a while back. It's a 235 pulley. So that is gonna be replacing the uh, 255 LPE pulley that that's currently on the car. And to go along with this, I also ended up ordering a 100 millimeter um, idler pulley, which replaces this one right here. And uh, this one came from Dedicated Motorsports. And while I was on their website too, I went ahead and and um, using their Excel spreadsheet that they got there, I ended up ordering this belt, which should work with the 235 and this idler pulley with the stock lower uh, balancer. So <clears throat> let's go ahead and get that installed. So, oh, before we go into that, so this is a LPE, uh, or in other words, it's a Lingenfelter pulley. Uh, on a LPE hub and the one I ended up getting is made by uh, ZPE or I guess grip tech and so I had to do a little bit of research but come to find out they actually made or they make some pulleys that will fit on the LPE hub which is what I was going after because I didn't want to go through the process of swapping out the hub for like a grip type one so if you guys are looking to pulley down and want to go with like a 235 or something around that um grip tech does uh, uh or zpe does make some pulleys that are made for the lpe hub all right so let me go ahead and take off the belt and then i'm gonna just pretty much start taking off these bolts right here and this one and get that off so i'll use a breaker bar to release some of the tension off the belt and then slip that off all right so i got the pulley bolts off um so some advice here uh, i found it just to be a little bit easier to keep the belt on first and then just to loosen up the bolts um that way the pulley wouldn't start turning on me but once i got everything loosened up i went ahead and took off the belt and then just uh untying the bolts and got those off so this should come off. All right, so here is the old pulley, the 255, and then here is the new one. So this one is a stainless steel one. Um, so it's supposed to be a little bit uh, thinner. Also, um, that way it clears the, what I'm assuming is up here. Um, so some people from me reading on the forums, they have ran into issues when trying to run a smaller pulley, um, essentially where the pulley would hit here. So they, so some people might have to uh, grind this down so that way they can get the pulley to clear. But in this case, from my research, this one shouldn't need, I shouldn't need to grind anything off and it should clear. So let's see. Okay, so I just made sure that everything clears, the pulley clears, there's no issues. Um, now, this one did come with bolts. Um, these right here, they're black. I had actually ordered an extra set because I didn't plan on reusing the ones that, that uh, originally were holding the older pulley. I just kind of wanted to get a fresh new set. So, uh, But I didn't realize that this pulley was going to come with, with some bolts already, but... I think I'm gonna go with the black ones instead of these. If uh, anyone's interested, that right there, those are the size right there. They're M4 fasteners. Um, so I am just gonna go ahead and use these and get this pulley installed back on the car. All right, got the pulley installed. There it is. Um, I did also apply some blue Loctite, so that is always recommended on this. You don't want your pulley to come off. And on this particular uh, pulley with these bolts, if I'm not mistaken, I uh, the torque spec is like 20 inch pounds. And that's what I ended up going with uh, based on the Lingenfelter website. But as you can see, okay, everything looks good here. So just take your time, make sure not to drop any bolts. Um, if I did drop some bolts, that's why I had ordered extra ones just in case. I'll probably end up down there with the plenty of other 10 millimeters I've dropped. But 
Anyway, so now time to get this one off and install the new one. All right, got the upper idler pulley off. There it is. Here's the new one. Um, you do have to pay attention and install these correctly. Um, this side goes, I guess, facing outward and on the back side, I'll tell you, this is the engine side. Um, and then according to your instructions, it just says reuse the bolt. And in this case, we torque it down to about 37 foot pounds and also use some blue Loctite. All right, so let me go ahead and get that back on. All right, got everything back on. This is pretty straightforward. The only thing I need to do now, I guess, is just turn on the car and make sure everything works. Uh, guys, you are able to change out the pulley. Um, yes, it is recommended that you get a tune right away. Now, the car should be drivable as long as you don't go into boost. So changing out the pulley doesn't really affect, um, you know, just normal driving. It's just uh, this has an impact whenever you go into boost. All right, so we're all good here. Uh, the only thing left to do is actually install back the K-Tech 103 throttle body. If you guys watched one of my previous videos, I was having issues with that throttle body messing up. I sent it in, they got it serviced. Supposedly they changed out the throttle, throttle position sensor. And after weeks and weeks, I finally got a sh uh, confirmation that it shipped. So that should be coming in tomorrow. And I'm gonna go ahead, take this off put on the 103 and then upload a new tune for the 103 and the new pulley. All right, so the K-Tech daughter body finally came in. The first thing I wanted to do is actually just test it and make sure that it was going to work properly. So I haven't taken off the stock one. The only thing I did was disconnect the <clears throat> this uh, plug here and then I went ahead and hooked up the 103. And so what, the issues that I was having before was that whenever I would key on the car, the blade was actually opening and closing real quick. So it was chattering. I just kind of have this rigged up like this. And my goal is to, or what I plan on doing is just keying on the car and listening to it and also trying to get a visual of it and make sure that it doesn't do that chatter sound. And if it doesn't, then it looks like we're good. And I'll proceed with uh, putting it back on. <clears throat> from that previous clip it looks like everything's good to go and you know pretty much i'll have to just go ahead and install it and then um i'll have to log it once i get the new tune uploaded to the car but all of this looks good so i'll go ahead and start taking off this one and i will have to apply like some gasket maker um that way it can uh you know have a good seal uh, whenever i tighten up this one Okay, so here I have the throttle body installed back on the car. And I'm doing one more last test, making sure that the throttle body is functioning properly whenever I key on the car. As you can see, this line's a lot more flat now. That's how it should have been. It's the green one, the one that goes with the throttle percentage. Um, so as soon as I fired up that, uh, fired up the car, I didn't really see that line going up and down, kind of like what I was seeing before. And so far, the throttle body is not making any sort of chattering or popping sounds. So I think we're good with that. Pretty much from here on, all I really need to do is just get some more logging done. Um, maybe do maybe do some partial accelerations and then wait for my tuner to see whenever he wants me to do a wide open throttle and then send that information back over to him and we'll just have to adjust the tune um, and go back and forth until we get everything ironed out so yeah so that wraps it up for this